Usain Bolt! Cleveland! This is for you! Remember the name! Sports, 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 sports talk zone. Welcome back to another week of Sports Talk Zone. I am your host Renaja along with Mikhail. And this week we'll start off with English Premier League football where Everton managed to beat the great Manchester United 1-0. Mikhail, how do you feel about your team losing to a team that is fighting relegation? <laughs> well, at this point, I wonder if it's Manchester United that should be down there fighting for relegation. <laughs> oh boy, yet again, Manchester United just disappointing. Trust me, I don't know what to say at this point. It's been a season full of disappointment. I don't know if it can get any worse. I don't know. Because even this game, at least we should have been able to, you know, do something. Everton, as I said, battling for relegation. We are talking about them last time out. Will they stay up? And we look, this was a good three points for them because this put them four points above the bottom three. So it's a good win for them. But Manchester United falling, falling. Great. Christiano couldn't help us today. I don't know <laughs> what happened. But the fear is still remains. <laughs> True. <laughs> he don't score, United don't win. But, <laughs> but I don't know. Manchester United. Honestly, at this point in time, I'll ask you, what is the problem with Manchester United? Tell me. I tell told you already. I tell you, it's more about the mentality at the club, the structure, the culture that is currently at the club it has nothing to do with coaches because they tried every single coach you can think of big coach small coach in between coach and it's the same result over and over it boils down to the core value of the club i don't see manchester have that like ferguson mentality of, of his time it change now it seems like it's more about who dressed the nicest who is the most active in their community or who is the most active on instagram and these kind of stuff but the true value of football culture isn't in manchester united anymore you can see it when they are playing on the all right look at the game did you see any of the manchester united player apart from ronaldo look like they were super upset and disappointed with what happened at everton no at this point it's just like it's whatever for them it's just anything goes they don't even care they're just playing and that is like the passion there is no way you should be playing for Manchester United. Lose to an Everton team that is. Don't get me wrong, Everton do have some quality players. Everton has the worst form in the English Premier League since I think from October until now. Something like that, I don't remember. But they have the worst form, the worst, and you lose to Everton. Everton that lost to Burnley 3 2. A Burnley team that is not known for scoring three goals managed to score three times on Everton and Manchester United could not score one. And I don't know what is it with Manchester United. It's like the lack of attacking nature to be clinical in front of goal. I just think the team don't have any belief. They just going out there to play. They don't feel it don't seem like they are playing for the badge. It don't seem like they are playing for the fans. It don't seem like they are playing for the history and culture of what the club used to be. It just seemed like they are just out there playing, hoping to collect their check and go home. Some of them know that they won't be there next season. So it's like whatever to them. Yeah, because watching the game, it's like, it's not a team you're watching. It's just individuals trying to do something in order for them to get something out of the game. Like you'll have a Sancho take on one and two players and try something. It's not the team where the team is playing together. There's no cohesiveness, bouncing, moving, and open up team, breakdown team. No, it's just either one player trying to do something. Because at times, Rashford just look lost in the game. Other players just look lost. Is that I don't, there's just something wrong that can't be explained. I don't know. But I tell you, it's the mentality, <laughs> it's the culture that is currently at the club. That will. So, how you change that? I don't have the answer. <laughs> I, and I hope it never changes. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I don't have the answer and I hope it never changes. It makes the Premier League better in my eyes. And Manchester United that is struggling is always a wonderful thing to see. Right. All right, let's move on to a next big club. They were looking to 
move up in the table looking to threaten a third position but they fall to Brighton over Albion 2-1 the great Arsenal the Gunners what was your thought on that game Arsenal 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 funny enough look at a couple of weeks ago we we're giving them props to him you know as I said probably threatening for that top three but somebody always tell me this points on the board is better than games in hand because you'll never know the outcome and this is a back-to-back loss for Arsenal yep. to Crystal Palace and now to Brighton and these would have been two games that anybody would say it's sure three points for them but they actually didn't get any and now surprisingly it's Tottenham who is looking like hey I want that third spot <laughs> so but it was a good game for Brighton. That goal for Arsenal, where they call it offside, was very close. And probably, I think if that would have gone... Bruh, goals like that should not be called offside. Correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't there some rule that they say if it was significantly close, like if it was too close, they would have just given the benefit to the... To the striker. Yeah, I thought I thought I'd seen something like that prior to the the season started i guess they had conclusive evidence but they were there a long time bro and you can't be conclusive in there for four minutes <laughs> Let's be I real. Get what you're four saying. minutes is not a conclusive thing unfortunately if that goal would have stand go one one the game probably would have have a different result but unfortunately the goal didn't stand and then brighton extended their lead when two nil up the rest was history arsenal score now Brilliant goal by Odegaard. But yeah, Arsenal slipping, slipping. Slipping, falling, they can't get up. (laughs) Yeah, but we know they're a young team and they were in a good position. But I guess they're a little cloud nine moment. (laughs) Reality kicked in. Now we see why they were bottom of the table earlier in the season. Are you saying to me that the old Arsenal is back? (laughs) The Arsenal that is known for bottling stuff? That's what you are saying to me? Well, it appears that way at this point in time because they shouldn't have lost those two games and they did. And I don't see them now challenging for that top four or top three position because that's how good they were earlier, about two weeks back. We were seeing them for third good position, but not as it stands right now. Yeah, I agree. I think it's the wrong time to be out of form or to lose back-to-back games. I'm glad things are back to normal, though. I hate when I have to constantly be praising Arsenal and speaking on how well they are doing. I like when they are having bad times, torrid moments, where I can talk about how horrendous they are. Was it last week? I think it was last week we were speaking about not just us, but a lot of Arsenal fans were pretty much saying that they would be third place based on how Chelsea was playing and I'm guessing they were counting their chickens before it was hatched and that come to show that as I said points on the board is better than games in ad you just never know what can happen in the Premier League and in my opinion I don't see I don't see Arsenal now making the top four based on how Tottenham is getting that momentum and they and let's not forget this they have one of the best coach in world football so that is something that we have to look at too that they have a coach that is known for winning so if there is a position that they need to secure that Tottenham need to secure I will put my money on Antonio Conte than on Arteta that is just my opinion on that but I didn't really even see the Arsenal game I just saw that they they lost and it was a proud moment in, in the world of football <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to the match of the weekend. Manchester City versus Liverpool and their 2-2. Give me your opinion on the game. The highly anticipated game, which didn't disappoint because this was being part of the game of the season based on where the two teams were. One Manchester City, one point ahead of Liverpool, coming down to the wire. Both teams were on a good run of form. So it was being advertised of who win this game, will win the league and... The world works, the fireworks, and trust me, did not disappoint. This was an end-to-end game. Even though people can argue that probably Man City was the better team throughout the course of the game because they had more... Not <laughs> argue. That's not argue. They were. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you'll have some persons who are biased as the Liverpool fans, but 
just me. City will feel like they should have won because they went up. Liverpool had the fight in them to come back. They went up again, 2-1, and going into... Probably they thought they could have even gone 3-1 going into the halftime, but then, as I said, Liverpool coming right back out the game. Because even that first half, I was saying Sadio Mane was lost in the game to me. Honestly, I really saw him. Every Liverpool player was <laughs> lost in that first half. Every single one. Trent Alexander, oh my God. Oh my God. Well, I love Trent, I want- but... Yeah, because he has a flaw in his game as it relates to his defensive capabilities. He's an yes. excellent passer of the ball, excellent. But even even the his, his passes in the first half, he was he, he was not on his game. He looked very very nervous and flustered, like he was like the moment was too big for him. But remember that he provided that assist regardless so. man regardless <laughs> his first half was terrible well he has always it has always been said that defensively he's not the best but attacking wise he's one of the best if not one of even the best no, dead going, ball taker going forward he's actually the yeah. best the best right back in the maybe in the world but then as i said defensively he fell asleep allowing gabriel Lezos to score that goal because he was running and i don't know why he stopped he just stopped to see that he was on his shoulder <laughs> but as i said liverpool had the fight in them to come back in the second half and score that goal equalize and then to me while city was still trying to score the winner and liverpool there too but you could see in the at about probably for the 78 80 minutes they were just everybody you know, was gassed <laughs> exactly because it was end to end you could see that they were tired and probably just say yes, let's just bro, set were, for this yes, draw yes because it's hard to be running up and down back and forth for the full 90 minutes right but as i said it was a game that didn't disappoint going forward now everybody will have to be on their p's and q's no one can afford a slip up at this point in time no unnecessary losses unnecessary drawn game all games remaining both teams need wins because if anyone slip up, because if City lose a game and no Liverpool is just right here looking to pounce and if Liverpool slip up, City will extend that one point lead. So very interesting. I love it. I hope this goes down to the last day. <laughs> it's, I love the league. It probably will. Liverpool have a way tougher fixtures left to go, but they will find a way to grind out results. So that is not an issue. The issue is, you know, a team like Manchester City will just go ahead and win these seven games straight. No issues. Right? That's the only issue I think Liverpool will be worried about. At the end of the day, the fate of Manchester City is in their own hands. Once they win, they can't lose the, the title. You'd have to remember that both teams are still in several other competitions as well. So rotation of squad injuries can happen. So that's why I'm saying you anything look, at this point. You ever look, look at Manchester City squad? <laughs> well, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Trust me, their bench is better than Manchester United. You, you, <laughs> you saw who, who they brought off the bench today? A hundred million dollar player, okay? They brought a hundred million dollar player off the bench. I've never seen this in the history of football. Hundred million dollar player coming off your bench. What I'll say about the game today, all this do for me is reassure me that Manchester City is indeed the best team in English football. Yes, I am a Liverpool fan, but it's clear as day that they are the better team. What Liverpool have is a team I think that is probably the most hard-working team in football so that make up for having less talent and this is how we are able to compete with a team like Manchester City because when you look at a player like Kevin De Bruyne bro, a player like that in your team I think he makes any team 15 to 20 percent better just him Max. alone because he can find any pass in the world with any one of his foot and that make him to me i don't think it's a question if he's the best passer of the ball and if he is one of the best midfielder in the world that is not even a question the game today the first half manchester city was all over liverpool all over Liverpool. Liverpool could not settle. They were giving away the ball. They just, at one moment, it looked like they were about to just lose that game. 3-4-0 when the first goal scored because they were just on edge. I don't know why, 
but the side was just on edge luckily we got not luckily but we got back an equalizer jesus end up sending manchester city ahead again but half time came we came back out in half time sadio mane right away goal and i think the the second half was way more even it was way more end-to-end stuff as you would say and, and i think that was a balanced game the second half was very balanced the first half it was to me it was all city and and in my opinion city had more clear-cut chances to win that game so yes i would think that city would be more disappointed with the result than we are so i'm i'm i'm, I'm okay i'm okay with 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 the draw to be honest i'm okay with it because at the end of the day all we need to do is just constantly stay on city so any slip up they make we are there to take advantage of that and i will also say i think this rivalry between manchester city and liverpool is the biggest rivalry ever in the history of the premier league as far as quality is concerned no nah, bro we're pushing it now this is nah, just in nah, the moment say, it's, as, nah, nah. listen as as far as quality is concerned these two teams is they are winning the seasons with 100 points 99 points 98 points these are the type of seasons you have to be having now to win the league liverpool finished with 97 points and lost the premier league finished second never yet ever happened in the history of our premier league never ever right 97 points is is even higher than the highest point at the time to ever win the premier league outside of city 100 points there has never been any other team in the history outside of city and Liverpool that have gotten 97 points in a Premier League. People can argue that maybe the league is getting weaker and not necessarily that mm, those teams are better. No, I, I think the league is way more competitive now than it was then. That's why Manchester United was able to win most of their titles because the league, the league wasn't competitive. <laughs> this man, this man. I hear you, I hear you, but as I said, that's your opinion. I totally disagree. But the Liverpool Manchester United derby is from back in the day in the quality of players that used to exist. Trust me. This is just in the moment right now that we're seeing. No, no, I'm, I'm telling you, this quality wise, this rivalry tops any other one we ever seen in the in the history. All right, let's move on to some Champion League now, Mikael. Let's get your prediction for the games coming up. Bayern Munich versus Villarreal. How you see that going? So going back to Germany, Villarreal with that one goal lead. As I said before, Bayern going minimum of three goals. So I'm putting a Bayern win. I don't know if it be 3-1 or what, but Bayern will win this one. I think they'll find it. Lewandowski, Brace, Muller. Yeah, at least three goals. So I'm saying 3-1. So they'll advance three two. So Bayern to win and qualify for the semi-finals. Yes, and then beat Liverpool after. But go on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will say this game will end in a two-two draw. I am expecting Bayern to come up gun blazing, trying to steam run Villarreal, leave yourself exposed, and Villarreal with take advantage of that i think Villarreal is a more solid team defensively than salzburg that bayern previously faced bayern munich to Villarreal to real madrid versus chelsea now this is one of the hardest games to call because as i said this and what i saw the last time out chelsea is not out of it they have the capabilities to pull themselves back if all cylinders fire but ah Madrid has a two goal lead being three one up from the last time out and I had picked Madrid to advance so I think I'll stick to a Madrid win a score line maybe a one nil maybe I'm picking Chelsea to win but Madrid to advance I think the game will end 2-1 in favor of Chelsea. Chelsea definitely will be trying their best to get back themselves in the game. Because if they go one goal up, they just need another goal to really put back the game in balance. And I think Real Madrid will not come with the intention of like trying to chase the game or play too expansive. I think they will be a bit more conservative in the way they play. And I think that might cost them. It might cost them. But with Chelsea's defense currently, 
Bradley and with how well Benzema is playing and Vinicius Jr. I would not put it past them to get a goal or two, but I think they will indeed qualify for the semi-final. So yeah, Chelsea 2, Real Madrid 1. Atletico Madrid versus Manchester City. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm still remembering that 10 0 0 position that Atletico came up with. But they're one goal down, so we know they can't be as defensive as they love to be. I'm hoping not because you need goals in order to win because they're one goal behind. And with that, hopefully they now open themselves up some more. We know City will take advantage of that. So I'm saying a City victory, I'm putting that maybe City 2 0. All right, Mr. Controversial in the house. Atletico Madrid won. City nil. This game will go to penalties. I think Atletico will do it in penalties. I don't have no reason for it, <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I, I just, I don't know. Simeone just always find a way to upset a big team or two in the Champions League. So I'm just saying based on that. Atletico Madrid won, City nil, go to penalty. Are you just, are you just trying to get out City early so they don't have to face Liverpool? <laughs> they don't have to face Liverpool if Bayern got to knock them out in the semi-finals. You said that. I'm just saying. Probably they'll be in the finals. Don't want to see City in the finals. <laughs> Ain't going to lie. <laughs> They are in the finals. We have to play them. That's what it is. All right. Liverpool versus Benfica. All right. So this one is a foregone conclusion. Liverpool to win 2 0. I had the same thing too. I agree with you. 2 0 to Liverpool at Anfield. Yeah. I, I don't see Benfica coming back into this game. Yeah. I just want to put this on record. One of the favorites normally get knockout at this round. So <laughs> let's see who will it be. Maybe it's the Byron. <laughs> Liverpool. Some yeah. upset always happen. Not saying it would be Liverpool. I'm just putting it no, one but, of these but, teams. But the two favorite, the two major favorites are City and Bayern. So if anyone gonna get, and both of them in a position where anything is possible. Yeah. So let's see if your theory is true. <laughs> All right, let's move on to basketball, Mikhail. Regular season has concluded, and your favorite team happened to miss out on a playing spot, not even a playoff spot, a play in spot. What do you have to say about the great, mighty Los Angeles Lakers with the so called quote unquote goat? Well, 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 this was a season of absolute failure. And from early out, if you go back, I was saying, hey, I don't like what I'm seeing. You were saying, give it time, maybe December, we'll ah. gel and come together. But trust me, yeah, was I wrong? You, could, <laughs> you saw from the get-go that this team, something just not right. I don't know what it is. Just, it was a horrible season for them. They have players who they signed and still even didn't play one game in Kendrick Nunn out due to injury. It's just a failure season. We don't want to even go into it. Injuries, chemistry problem, all kind of madness. It was just horrible. The team didn't make any sense. From the beginning, everybody was saying, and you know, I was saying this to myself. When the season, when the Westbrook trade happened, I said, Durant couldn't do it. Harden couldn't do it. I said, if LeBron James was able to win a chip with this man, he'll definitely be the greatest player of all time. You saw the Magic Johnson statement where he said, well, LeBron was the one who pushed for Russell Westbrook and he could have had the Rosen and Buddy Hill with Caruso still at the Lakers. Yep. I heard it because they were showing the front office under the bus basically saying that. But he came out in defense to say that it's LeBron who wanted this to happen. But I'll say this. I don't know what LeBron saw or what LeBron was thinking, honestly. Because as I said, a host of players have tried and I don't know. All throughout the year, he just kept on saying, we just need Russ to be Russ. But Russ being Russ is turnovers high volume shots he needs the ball in order to get his 30 or 20 this man taking 15 16 shots that's why even with him and Harden together at a point out everybody was saying that can't work these two men need the ball so i don't know what the game plan would have been because they always tell you you want a successful team with lebron james show around him with shooter 
That's why I keep on saying it. Next season, we're getting Dame Dollar and we're winning the chip. You think this season affect LeBron legacy in any shape or form? I know you're going to say yes, but I'd say no, honestly. Why? No. Why are you saying no? He's in year 19 at the age of 37. He has done something that no other player in his age averaging 30. Sure. What the individual is doing. But I'm He's speaking about his goat. Level. I'm speaking of <laughs> him reaching that goat status where it is undeniable that he is the goat. Trust me, this man has nothing more to prove. Coming three one down against yeah, the Warriors, he, he has more to prove Trust because <laughs> people can't. People constantly say it's Michael Jordan who is the goat, and they keep on saying this that six finals. Six. Not just that, they talk about this. That's killer. all they talk. No, they talk about this killer. Six in six. That's yeah. all they talk about. Like talk the about man his... played only six years. <laughs> <laughs> the man, the man played in the league for about about years his and lost instinct, as well. Bro. They talk about his killer instinct. They speak also of how dominant he was. His MVP scoring titles, all these stuff. We would have seen where LeBron is the only player in NBA issue to leave all five category statistical in the finals against the Golden State, shooting, rebound, assists, steals. What I'm saying, I don't think this season was just a bad season for the entire Laker organization. The best player on the team was who? LeBron James. So he did what he had to do. But the team was just glass man Anthony David couldn't stay healthy, even though it's some freak incident stepping on a player's foot and out for how many games. It's not like, you know. So it was just a bad season. All right, let's move on to playing tournament. Brooklyn Nets versus the Cavs. Atlanta Hawks versus Charlotte Arnett. Minnesota Timberwolves versus Los Angeles Clippers. And New Orleans Pelicans versus San Antonio Spurs. What's your prediction for those playing games? Brooklyn Nets versus the Cavs. All right, so the Brooklyn Nets versus the Cavs. I'm picking Brooklyn to win that one. Okay, Hawks versus Arnett. Hawks. Okay, and now... Hawks versus Cavs. Mm, okay, the Hawks. All right. Minnesota Timberwolves versus Los Angeles Clippers. I'm giving it to Minnesota. Ooh. Even though Paul George has come back and claimed, yeah. but cat. All right. <laughs> New Orleans Pelicans versus Spurs. I probably have to give it to. Uh, funny enough, these two teams are almost like teams that not even want to win, but <laughs> I'm giving it to. <laughs> New Orleans with CJ McCollum over there. I'm okay. giving it to New Orleans. Los Angeles Clippers versus New Orleans Pelicans. And then I'll probably give it to the Clippers. Okay. Let's see how that turns out. I I don't disagree with your picks. I probably have went with the Los Angeles Clippers over the Timberwolves, but it would still turn out the same way because I would have picked the Timberwolves over Pelicans. All right, let's discuss some of the end of season awards Mikhail. who do you have for your most improved player of the season you know probably i'll give it to jamarant most definitely <laughs> definitely ja. yeah i will go with jamarant too made a significant jump this year from last year pretty much people are even saying that he should be in the mvp conversation and not even the most improved player most so, improved player mm-hmm. yeah so uh, for me it's definitely ja and from 19 points per game to 27 points per game rebounds went up three point percentage went up he improved in almost every single facet of his game so who is your mvp of the year also michael this one is very hard very very hard because these are my top three and i don't know which one to choose Giannis, mb and joker i don't see honestly if it's for me i'll probably give it to Giannis. all right but I... joker, well, it's hard I went with Joel Embiid. I did not select Joel based on stats only. I select him based on difficulty because the whole drama that had surrounded the Philadelphia 76ers with the Ben Simmons issue, that, that's a big distraction for any player. And a lot of us was kind of counting out Philly from evil being in contention for the East because of the fact that it was just basically Joel was only him and he 
put the Sixers on his back and he pretty much is trying to take them to the promised land. So that is my reason for going with him. Every Almost every night you're looking, he's, he's putting up 30 plus. And even with the Joker, basically not having his second best player um, in with Jamal Murray out and even Michael Porter Jr. And he was still balling, still put the team on his back. Sometimes when I look at that man and play, he just look, I would call it unorthodox, just look and just scoring so easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's balling, same way, making some tough shots and rebounding. He's one of the best I, faster for a big man. I think they will give it to Joe Kish though, but I, I would rather see it go to Joel. <laughs> That concluded for another week of Sports Talk Zone. You can hear us on all streaming platforms and follow us on Instagram at Sports Talk Zone 876 and on YouTube at Sports Talk Zone. Big up Kingston College and Edwin Allen for their victory no, at the Boys no, and Girls no, Champs. No, no, you can't be doing Pick that. So, no, it's not Jago. You can't do that. <laughs> All big ups reserved for Jacob, bro. Don't do that. <laughs> I guess you'll never do a big up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, school challenge, Chris. Big up Jacob for school challenge. Chris. So easy. School challenge. <laughs>